Are you struggling with skip stitches or your thread breaking? Well, today I've got a treat for you. I'm going to go bug our technician, Dennis. He's gonna walk through it with us, show us what to look for and how to fix it. Let's head down there. Hello, my name is Dennis. Hope this video is helpful to you. Let's get started. Today, what we're gonna talk about is thread breakage, skip stitches, and some of the possible causes for those. The first thing we wanna do is pull off this bad spool of thread. And I know people wanna save money, but a good quality thread means everything. Make sure that on all of your thread guides, anywhere that the thread comes in contact with, that it's very smooth. And especially when you get down to your, your thread guides, but before you go into the needle, because you have a lot of tension right in here on this uh, thread guide, then make sure that there is no rough places in there at all, because you don't want any hanging. If you hang, it will cause thread breakage, skip stitches and even needle breakage. These needles can get rough places on the uh, tip of the needle that's called a burr and that will hang your thread and cause skip stitches and thread breakage. Go ahead and take that needle out and put a new needle in. And also the removing of your foot to always check and make sure that there's no rough places inside this foot because the thread comes in contact with this foot in all directions. You want to make sure that that is very smooth and clean from any burrs at all. The next thing that we go to is your needle plate. Usually everybody carries a nickel in their pocket. It's a good tool to remove your needle plate screws. And to remove these, we'll do this. And uh, check for some rough places in the, uh, the needle hole. If you've got a needle plate that looks like this, you've got a real good looking needle plate. And I'll just show you an, an example of uh, some burrs in this plate. If that thread comes in contact with these rough places, it will break. To get this burr out, I use an abrasive tape. We sell those here, but what you can do is put this plate in a vise to hold it secure, and then you can put your abrasive tape, this is a coarse tape, and you can take it and pull it back and forth to remove those rough places. It doesn't take long to smooth this tape out. And so you can use that smooth tape that you wore off the abrasive from and use that to polish this on the inside. Use caution not to take too much out of this needle plate hole. Next, you want to check your bobbin. Sometimes from the manufacturer, they get a rough place in the mold from each side, from here to over here. Just go ahead, instead of sanding them off, just go ahead and get you a new bobbin and that's the uh, best way to do that. Next, after the bobbin, we'll check the uh, bobbin case. You wanna just take your finger and run across the edges around and just check for any rough places at all. If your bobbin case has a rough place on the edge, sometimes you can feel a rough place here. What I usually do, if it's just a, a scratch, I'll take my fine sandpaper, just a little bit of pressure, and sand it until I get it smooth out. You don't want to take a, any shape off of this bobbin case at all. But if you have needle marks that's going all the way through the bobbin case, throw the bobbin case away and get a new bobbin case. Whenever you install your bobbin case, be sure that this part here is against your bobbin case stopper. If it's not against that stop, it'll be positioned in a place that it's not supposed to be and then your needle will come down and go through the bobbin case. Whenever it does that, throw your bobbin case away and install a new one. Next, we will go to our sewing hook. You want to make sure that this part of this point is free from burrs. I should be able to run my fingernail across the end of this sewing hook without hanging. And if your finger slides off smoothly, you don't have a burr. If I have a hang this way or coming around this way on the back, I will need to get that rough place off with a uh, piece of sandpaper. I use coarse sandpaper and take it to the back of the sewing hook 
and I will go work it back and forth until I feel like it's smooth and then what I will do, I'll run my finger on the back side and it's already smoothed this one up. So now I go to my fine piece of sandpaper. You can tell that I've used it bunches of times. It's wore out. Need to get some new. <laughs> but anyway, same procedure. You put your sandpaper around the back side of that hook. You probably won't be able to see it that well, but you just put it behind the hook and go backwards and forth till you feel like it's uh, going backwards and forth real smooth and then remove it, take your fingernail and feel and I don't have any hangs and I know that's good. And your thread will appreciate that as well. Before I go back together with it, I would want to make sure that all of this hook area in here is clean from all lint. Now that we've checked all of those things, we can do the fun part now. The exciting part is putting the machine back together. Now we will, we will go to a different hook system, which is a shuttle hook. And uh, all of the other things that we talked about, checking everything, all of your guides for rough places, burrs, it's the same applies to this machine. And, but just a hook system is different. Flip this cover down and remove your bobbin case. And just take the wing, take the latch, and pull it out. Take these wings and flip them to the side. And which what that's going to do, that's going to allow us to remove the hook and the, uh, the raceway and everything out together. Take the middle of this shuttle hook and pull it out and all of it comes out together. On the shuttle hook, you want to make sure that you do not have any rough places on the back point of this hook or on the front, on the front edge. Make sure that there's no rough places all the way around it. And if you do, just like the previous video shows, get you a piece of sandpaper and smooth off the rough place. Now we'll go to our race. Your thread, as it's flopping around while it's sewing, it will come in contact with these edges. And you want to make sure that all of these edges do not have any rough places on them. If there's a burr on the bobbin case, it usually it will be right in this groove where the needle goes through. Some people go ahead and take a piece of smooth sandpaper. They'll buff this and get the rough place out. But usually, if I have one hanging like that, I would just replace the bobbin case. Next, we will check our shuttle driver. The way that I've got the machine turned now, your needle is all the way down, and this is where it will come in contact with the uh, shuttle driver. If your needle has hit that shuttle driver enough, it will cause it to have a few burrs on it. You do this the same way as you would a hook from this area to this area here, you would kind of lightly sand that until you get all the burrs off till it's very smooth. And that's about the only thing I know. Dennis has been a technician for over 30 years. Talk about a lot of information stored in that brain of his. Just a little reminder, although this information is going to be very helpful for you, it doesn't take the place of bringing in your machine for scheduled maintenance. Continue to regularly bring your machine in every six to 12 months. See that sewing doctor and keep your machine running smoothly. Until next time, happy sewing everybody.